ass. Wash it down like a motherfucking face rat. Bitch, I'm the one who gon' make your whole day bad. Stay off the net, you a snake. With What's up, gang? We back with part three of the uh, Raps First Serial Killer King Von. Um, the last last part I put in the video, so we had watched like <laughs> another 20 minutes, but we didn't know the screen recording had cut off. So I went back, not that far, just a couple minutes, but we're going to start here. Let's get it. Finish this off. Continue to rap about such true criminality. Lil Durk's experiment in taking the realest gangbanger from his block and turning him into a drill rapper was going too far and jeopardizing his own career. It was only years later, after Vaughn's death, that those charges against Lil Durk for the varsity shooting were eventually dropped, with the district attorney saying that if King Von was still alive, he likely would have still been charged and facing trial for attempted murder. But in the end, whilst he was alive, King Von would face no real consequences for his involvement in this supposed shooting. In fact, Von would bail out from these charges and continue his career, not even choosing to keep a low profile. In fact, even with the scrutiny of the police in two states, Von would go on to have one of the most successful runs in the rap game, dropping song after song of violent drill anthems, with the entire world following along I'm wondering how this multiple murderer just kept getting away with it. Pop World saw King Von next to Lil Durk in the courtroom in shackles. He quickly gained a reputation as one of the realest street rappers in the rap game. For some people, seeing Von in court with Durk, one of the most famous rappers in Chicago history, was their first introduction to him. However, for anybody that looked closer into his history, discovering the murder case that he beat, or as many as seven people he was rumored to have killed, they would be easily convinced that King Von might just be one of the most deadly and dangerous people to ever pick up a microphone. And King Von wasn't just a killer who had gotten away with his terrible crimes, but he was seemingly willing to rap about them for the whole world to hear. Von's next release after getting arrested with Dirk would be his May 3rd. So that means just more people were getting put on Von at that time, though. That I already haven't heard his crazy story and all that, because mm -hmm. all his other cases was before the fame and stuff. Right. So now they see you in court with Dirk. You know, everybody already following the Dirk. Dirk get being in jail like that. Everybody following that. And now they seeing Von with him. That's that just put him on even more. Then for them to get out and still start going crazy again. Right. This thing like 2019 one. feature on Izzy Black's Straight Facts. With this track being yet another self-incrimination fest, Von raps on the song I that he used to song. do murder for hire, and he says that he shoots people in the face and is seven to one on beating murder cases. Von even ended the song saying that the last person that came to his street got killed. With lyrical content this dark, violent, and frankly self-incriminating, it's hard to believe that King Von would go on to achieve mainstream success in the rap game. But his music was undeniably good, despite the murderous messages behind it. He genuinely had a talent for taking these dark experiences he had in the streets and making them into songs that painted a vivid picture. And celebrities would soon begin discovering his music and promote it without a full appreciation of the stories behind the songs. Von would end up getting a huge career boost when basketball star LeBron James's son, Bronny, would jam out to Von's original anthem, Crazy Story, with Bronny even passing Von's music to his father, who reportedly would end up becoming a fan of playing Von's music during his workouts. While Von went to the no jail in connection for the attempted murder in Atlanta, he would spend some of that time behind bars writing some of the biggest songs of his career. And when he got out, he would go on the run of a lifetime, taking over the rap game with his new songs and buzzing reputation as a real shooter. Priming fans for the upcoming release of his debut mixtape, Grandson Volume 1, Von promoted it with an Instagram post pondering if the people he killed, spirits, follow him around until he dies. And also tweeting that by the time people work out what he's done, it will be too late and his mixtape will be out. The tape's lead single, What It's Like, dropped on September the 2nd, 2019. And the music video for that song would feature that video of his ops saying that he was responsible for the killing of Can't Get Right, as well as footage from his arrest in Oblock and courtroom footage from the Atlanta case with Lil Durk. This song is an introspective and deep track about what it's really like living the gang life in Chicago. Von would rap about getting to jail and being given knives to defend himself, Ops trying to work out who killed their friends, and rapping that when he was in jail, he caught somebody who killed one of his friends and beat them up, even saying that he was in jail with D. Rose, that same shooter who was allegedly at the scene of the Lil Mark murder with Von, rapping that he was there in a cell when D. Rose got sentenced to 40 years in prison for a 2014 murder of a teenager, with Von rapping that witnessing D. Rose get sentenced to all of these years really hurt his soul. Von would end that song with a heartfelt outro, saying that the same cops that locked up his friends D. Rose, C. Day, and Rondo Number no. 9 told him that they were out to get him too 
after he caught his murder in 2014. Von said that the cops were trying to catch him and his friends like it was a game, but really, this was just Von taunting those cops who were never able to catch him for the things he'd allegedly done. Ironically, just the day after dropping a song about the cops trying to arrest him, the cops would arrest Von for battery. On September 3rd, 2019, after apparently beating up a man who called his girlfriend Asian doll a bitch in the studio, with Von admitting openly on Instagram Live that he just beat somebody up for his girlfriend. Somebody called my girlfriend today. Come out of my hand, bro. I was over beat his ass. Von would be in jail and not posting to his own Twitter account for just over a month. But while he was inside, his music kept on releasing. All in the lead up to his grandson volume one mixtape. On yeah. September 10th, 2019, Von would appear on a song called for a fact, Slim Slim Fantana, that's your boy. Santana. And on this song, Ooh. Von would rap that he's killed. I said, Slim Fantana, that's your boy. Oh, that's that one we was talking about where you said for real? Nah. Oh. The one you was making fun of. Called For a Fact, with another rapper called Sim Santana. And on this song, Von would rap that he's killed and would do it again, as well as a lyric where he says that all of his bodies are headshots and that tweeting about the murders has attracted the attention of the cops, as well as lines about catching ops and killing them by bus stops, seemingly a reference to the death of Little Mark. But it would be three days later when Von would bless the fans with the song that they had been truly waiting for as Crazy Story Part 3 was finally released. This was another op-shooting, storytelling anthem and the most significant release leading up to September 19 when his grandson Volume 1 mixtape would come out. This was a roaring debut for Von, with the project landing at number 75 on the Billboard 200. And this project had some crazy song concepts, like the track F Your Man, which is a love song, where Von <laughs> raps about seducing a woman with a boyfriend and vowing to kill him for her, along with numerous lyrics about killing ops and catching bodies, as well as shooting up funerals. He also had another song with Lil Durk called Twin Man, where Durk says that Von shoots people and that they got caught shooting on camera with no masks on, seemingly a reference to their Atlanta shooting case. Von raps outright that he tries to kill people, ironically saying that he can't speak on what he's doing because the feds are watching him, you know, whilst rapping about what he's doing on his Billboard charting mixtape. He also had the pop rap love song No Flaws, where he sings to a woman about how dangerous and handsome he is. He also had a song Mama's Boy, where he says that his mother is who raised him to the world yeah, savage yeah. that he is today. He also references beating up K.I. on the train on this song. Von was putting out a lot of bold statements on this project, and surprisingly, with all of this coming out whilst he was still behind bars, eventually Von would get out of jail on October the 10th, 2019, being released and returning to Twitter immediately, continuing to push and promote his new mixtape, as well as announcing that he would be going on tour to perform his new hits live. And Von would go on to play huge shows with his fans going crazy, and he would waste no time beginning to tease new music soon after his mixtape dropped, specifically the first single of his next project titled 2AM, a song where Von rapped the brazen lyric can't put no more guns in my videos because the ATF and DEA know they ain't props. And after this release, Von would claim to be receiving multi-million dollar record deal offers. But while Von was getting more and more famous, so too were the rumors of him being a real killer, and his incriminating lyrics weren't helping matters either. During this period, it seemed like Von would simultaneously be claiming to have really done all of these murders in his music, but then at other times, being desperately trying to convince his following that he never did anything. On his November 29th release, the song Rollin' with fellow rapper and accused double murderer YNW Melly, Von would rap that he has killed so many people they should call him Rambo, and saying, I did it, but it wasn't me, which perfectly sums up his attitude during this time, jumping on songs and saying over and over again that he really is the killer they say he is, and then jumping on Twitter to say that he would never do anything like the rumors say he did. He would tweet after this release, saying that somebody is trying to send him to jail every day. And in December, Von would appear prominently on Lil Durk's Family Over Everything compilation album for his OTF record label, with the front cover of this project ironically resembling a suspect board for a criminal investigation with Von positioned as an underboss under Lil Durk. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if the feds just downloaded this image and added it to the case file. But a few days later, mm. on December the 14th, 2019, Von does a post on social media saying that he is all these dead people want to talk about in heaven. Rest in piss to the goofies. I wouldn't be the savage I am today if it wasn't for y'all. It seemed like Von was really getting more and more comfortable saying that he was a killer publicly. The following week, on December the 21st, 2019, Von does a feature for the rapper Little Loaded where he never asked for that song in a box. Too. But not long after this song dropped, Von would go live on Instagram in the car telling fans that he had bodies and even going as far as to ask them to guess how many people he's killed and asking the fans if they think that it's more than five bodies, and even seemingly swearing on O.D. Perry's life that he has killed more than five people. Man, I got a lot. Man, I got a lot. Shut up, I got a lot, DJ. Just three, I'm gonna be out there. 
Dari tape Dari Kalau lu Emang ya Mungkin saya tau Kek Bo ada Bro, he could have really just been a Hall of Fame troller. <laughs> <laughs> Don was either feeling invincible or just being completely reckless. He would tweet a couple of days after Christmas 2019, beat the odds time and time again without doing no funny stuff. Stay in 10 toes. I done chased and beat up the guys that you were claiming was gangster, and I got fans all over the states. One of the realest and rawest people you'll ever meet. You're welcome as well as saying, F his dead ops. Going into 2020, Von was still winning, tweeting that it now cost $20,000 to book him for a show, and then announcing a huge booking opening for G Herbo on his PTSD tour. Clearly stacking that paper, in February, Von was going live in the bank, making a large deposit and pressing the bank manager. Oh, that's crazy. What's up, man? You good? Hey, baby. Ain't nobody with it. Jesus. Nobody's safe. But soon Von's bank account was about to go to the next level because at the end of February, he would release one of the biggest songs of his career. His hit track, Took Her to the O. Another storytelling type track with a catchy chorus where Von shouts out O Block. But this time, it wasn't some random made up story. This was a song all about him meeting a woman who leads him to his rival from Tukerville turned rapper, FBG Duck. Von ends the song saying that he shoots Duck, literally rapping that he killed him and left him on the curb. With this supposedly fictional FBG Duck murder scenario being reenacted in the music video of the song too. The day that Von released the video, he would tweet saying that everything he says in his music is made up and that he's just rapping to make money for his family. And I'll be honest, I believe this is where we see Von's psychopathic tendencies really shining. Not only had he seemingly killed people and occasionally attempted to deny it on Twitter, but this time he had actually made a whole song and an entire narrative music video about him personally killing FBG Duck. This is someone he had openly been embroiled in a deadly feud for around a decade with at this point. Von was literally making videos telling the story of how he was going to kill FBG Duck, all while claiming on Twitter that his lyrics were just entertainment. But apparently they weren't, because allegedly behind the scenes, Von had put $100,000 of his hard-earned rap money up as a bounty on FBG Duck's head. This is the kind of behavior that makes me feel King Von really was a serial killer, because no amount of success in the rap game was enough for him to stop killing people. Instead, his compulsion to kill, or at least the commission killings, was just too strong. He would continue to allegedly use his resources to have people killed behind the scenes, all while attempting to maintain a somewhat clean public image, despite all of the music that he was releasing celebrating them. The video for Took Her to the O is used. I still don't think that makes him a serial killer. Based off the, the <clears throat> definition stuff, I don't know. I feel like there's some like a, I don't know. I don't see. I don't see serial killer. I see someone that was, that was born into some. He got he 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 killing oppositions like ops and people. That's it's, it's a game. It's it's a game banger. It's a regular game banger to me. Unless you finna call every game banger a serial killer. Cause I'm sure there's more people we don't know about, just like King Von, that just don't have the rapping talent. That's out there killing multiple people like this from the opposite game. So they make them a serial killer. I thought a serial killer was just somebody that goes psycho, go crazy in the head, and get to killing random people and stuff. You only going by you, you only going by a serial killer based off what you're seeing in the in, 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 in documentaries or other movies. Well, this is what this is. This, is a, this guy's documentary, and then broke it down to that this guy is. She's saying basically is a, a serial killer. So, in other words, like you said, what you thought was a serial killer, and tell me if I'm wrong, is other documentaries. Uh, I can't think of no names right now, but yeah, me neither. So, but you take a guy like Vaughn, I mean, the, the the show that we're seeing here is very compelling, as it was saying the court. This is very compelling. <laughs> you know, 
information that he's put together. Yeah. You know, his music is, you know, before I even seen these documentary, this documentary, I told you it was something about this guy's music when you first introduced me to Von doing the dad reactions that I could feel like, man, this is my, I, I believe what this guy's saying. Like, you just don't put this together and say it the way he's saying it. You know, I don't care unless you didn't done this. So, I mean, you know, that was my first feelings. But the definition, and that's what they did in the ver first part, he broke down the definition of what a serial killer is. So by definition, he qualifies. Okay, so by definition, there's a whole lot of serial killers out here. That's why, okay, that makes sense though. That's why he put raps first serial killer. Because by definition, it's a ton of serial killers out here. They just weren't rap. 24 hours. And at this point, Von was really one of the hottest prospects in the rap game. The fans would be hungry for his next full-length release, which came on March the 6th, 2020, when he dropped his new mixtape, LeBron James. Named after the famed yes, NBA legend LeBron James, who had become a fan of Von's music along with his son. And Von would troll his ops by even purchasing a promotional billboard for the project on 63rd as well as releasing Not From 63rd merchandise. Unfortunately for Von, however, the project itself would end up debuting precisely at number 63rd on the Billboard charts. Sometimes I see stuff like this, and I just feel like it must have been God just making fun of Von for all the bad things he did in his life. Because this was his biggest career achievement. But you know, he must have been furious to have ended up charting at the one number that he despises. And Von would never even publicly acknowledge or tweet the chart performance of this mixtape, probably for that reason that it went 63rd. But landing at 63rd on Billboard was still a great performance for a relatively new artist with such violent and raw content. The project itself would be laced with more of the basic drill anthems, like the track Down Me with Lil Durk, where Von raps about getting doctors to bring people back to life so he can kill them again, and killing so many ops that the surviving ones don't have any <laughs> friends left. There would also be the song Broke Ops, where he seemed to reference calling for the hit on Can't Get Right. Then there was the track Don't Wanna Be Me, where Von explains that his mindset growing up had to be either him or me. He'd reminisce on hearing gunshots the night he moved into Oblock as a child and his experience growing up around killers and criminals and having to fight every day. He would rap about being devastated at the loss of his right-hand man T-Roy and explaining how losing Sheroid, OD and Patoon turned him into a killer in 2012, ultimately describing the gory details of the bloody couple of months of killing that he was allegedly involved in in 2014. And during this time, Von also begun to post pictures of his friends from Oblock posing with large wads of cash and referring to them as Get Back Gang Entertainment, further blurring the lines between the music and the real gang killing people in the streets. A week later, Von would appear on his girlfriend Asian Doll's song, Pull Up, a track with jaw-dropping lyrics where Von claimed to have killed seven people in total at this point, saying that if he catches three more, he's at double digits. A day after that release, Von would tweet that girls hook up with him just so that they can say that they were with a killer. Next, he appeared on the song Get Back Mode with Oblock veteran Boss Top, where he rapped that he was stacking up bodies like Tetris. All of these murder anthems were doing numbers, and the money was going <coughs> in for them. He would graduate from buying his mother Gucci purses, soon flexing on Twitter that he had just bought her a brand new Mercedes and large suburban home. Von's career was going from strength to strength, and he was showing no signs of letting up. On April the 29th, 2020, he would drop his new single, Grandson for President coming with lyrics where he says that they're trying to blame him for all the unsolved murders in his city. He'd rap that he's trying to kill all of the ops, and he would end his verse saying that he could kill you by rapping on the beat, or by shooting you in the street. And Von would promote the music video for this song on Instagram, adding a caption with seven skulls, asking people how many they had, sparking speculation that this was him cryptically telling the world once again that he killed seven people to promote this song. A few days later, he appeared on the song Body Count with Mozzie and G Herb, rapping that if you have a few bodies, everyone will know. A couple of days later, Von would tweet that he can't get a job now because he has more bodies than TK, a teenage rapper who got 55 years for murder. Oh, also dang. He's done more hit. We gotta react to TK, the mm -hmm. race. He, um, so if y'all don't know, I lived in Dallas for a while. He lived in Arlington. Okay. He went to school, like, out in Arlington. One of the Arlington schools, like, one of them schools out there. Or was it what? Somewhere in that area. But he got um, 55 years in prison for um, some shootings and stuff. Killing, I think, killed a person or a robbery. Something like that. Some, Something crazy. But he dropped a song while on the run from the police called The Race. And it went stupid crazy. Stupid viral. 
because he was literally on the run from the police, like had his own wanted picture in the video. And he even dropped a song while he was on the run. Dropped a song, music video. It was crazy. We got to react to that. It's crazy. But he dropped like a whole little mixtape, like eight song mixtape, some real short songs and stuff right before he went in. And Tay-K is actually, he, he was a, he had potential as to be a legit rapper. And, you know, he ended up getting that 55 and that killed all his momentum. 55 years? 55 years. He think he was like, I don't even think he was 18. I think he was like 17. We you know in Texas, you get charged as an adult. 17. Wow. 17 or 18. He was young, though. Some made hit songs. And then, from May 21st, 2020, a vlog was released, which showed Von going back to O Block, aka Parkway Gardens, to hand out wads of cash to his gang. And it would later emerge that Von was providing drugs and guns to his old hood and splitting the rewards with his crew, providing them with jewelry and luxury vacations in exchange for their work in the streets. Von clearly didn't care about broadcasting his activities to the world, and eventually, people began to take notice. On May 22nd, YouTuber Trap Geek releases an it. iconic video on King Von titled The Soft Spoken Assassin. This video essentially broke down Von's violent past and his rise to the top of the rap game. One murder of a kid named Odell, allegedly, according to the internet detectives on Reddit, has King Von's name written all over it. And Von didn't seem to initially appreciate the attention, tweeting that the videos these white people are all making about him aren't true and calling them the cops, or 12. However, a month later, Von seemed to have a change of heart, and he would actually begin to use that nickname that Trap Geek gave him as a caption on his Instagram, declaring himself to be a soft-spoken assassin. Two days later, Von tweeted that he still has people on his list, presumably referring to a list of people he still wants to kill. And it seems that the biggest name at the very top of that list was FBG Duck. Von had been going back and forth with Duck since high school and had a years-long grudge against him. He'd had a Twitter exchange with Duck the day before he'd allegedly killed K.I., who was a close friend of Duck's, an exchange where Von said that he was also looking for Duck. In fact, a couple of months after King Von had released the music video for Took Her to the O, that video where he played out his fantasy of killing Duck, Duck would go live saying that he beat up Von on the school bus back in the day. Duck would also tell Von that he's only famous because of Lil Durk. You come up on the dirt. When y'all get mentioned, y'all get mentioned as Lil Durk homies. But here's where things get chilly. Because as Duck continues to mock Von in what seems to be a disrespectful, but at least not entirely death-threatening way, Von would pop up, following along live, and demonically commenting on Duck's Instagram names of people that Get Back Gang had seemingly killed, and continuing to insult him throughout the entire live. It seemed like Von was plotting on having Duck killed for years. In November 2018, King Von would be on live, apparently in Lil Durk's Atlanta home, expressing his desire to see FBG Duck dead, saying that he would perform at his funeral whilst eating some cereal. Yeah, cereal be bust or something. They said King Von featuring FBG Duck. They said that's what they want to see, huh? Stop that, man. I'll perform at his funeral. We now know. <laughs> Maybe he says stuff so casual. Is that what? So this, 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 I don't, I don't have it. So this Instagram or Twitter stuff, like I, I got Facebook, but this is stuff that people are actually talking on that they're recording. And it's going live, you just... On Instagram Live, you can... Well, you can do this on any app. You can, um, on your phone, they screen... People screen record stuff. You don't know how to screen record, do you? No. What do you mean? <laughs> you screen, let it see your phone. <laughs> you just recording your screen. Like they say, this how, is this how I clip out um, the videos to put them on TikTok. Like, let's say... Um, Click on this right here, then you go down and uh um, oh, you gotta go to your settings. You ain't even got the screen recording um button on here. That's it. Yeah, I don't But screen recording just recording your screen, that's all I do. And they be doing that and posting it or something? Yeah. It's crazy. Uh, people got like it's like fan pages, like King Von fan pages and all kind of for a lot of these rappers, they, they these people, they gonna be on your live as soon as you go live. They screen recording stuff. As soon as you come on there live, they yeah, on there. They screen they recording stuff. You got to say. Yeah, just in case you say something crazy, just in case you play some unreleased music, it's gonna be it reposted again. Oh, then so you that's got stuff go viral. Yeah, then you got blog pages, rap blog pages like DJ Academics, the guy that um got made the all uh, the Chicago. He made the Warren Chirac. Okay. Years back, he got his Instagram page, millions of followers, and he kind of like. 
he like the rap shade room kind of like he posting stuff all the time so just yeah <laughs> he ain't know how to scream for the next one of some dollar bounty on FBG Duck's head. And funnily enough, Von tweeted throughout his career that his main goal was simply to make $100,000. And when Von was finally rich, less than a month before Duck was killed, he would tweet, Von got the money, so Von gonna pay it to his brothers. And he would also later rap on the song, Me and Doody Low, that he gave out 100, so you can bet that they're coming. In July 2020, Von would also show off other blockchains that he had purchased for his friends from the famous hip hop jewelry store, Icebox. Something that we now know may well have been an incentive provided to Von's shooters to continue to catch bodies for him. And soon we would see the tragic reality of this situation playing out on the streets of Chicago in real time. On the afternoon of August the 4th, 2020, FBG Duck is shopping in the Gold Coast, a place that's been described as the Rodeo Drive of Chicago, a high-end and high-profile tourist shopping district. After being given Duck's location, six shooters were sent from O'Block to kill him. They were Charles Liggins, aka C Murder, to Carlos Offord, aka Los Mana, Marcus Smart, aka Muwap, Christopher Thomas, aka C Fang, Kenneth Robertson, aka Kenny Mack, and Zell Munna. After being provided with his location, two vehicles end up 30 minutes away from O'Block, pulling up to the location where Duck had been shopping. Then, at about 4.37pm, Duck would be confronted outside of the Dodge and Gabbana store by a group of masked individuals hopping out of two cars and opening fire on Duck in broad daylight. A man and a woman who were standing with Duck at the time of the shooting were both injured, but fortunately survived. And someone would even post a 12-minute video depicting the crime scene immediately after Duck's death, with Duck being seen writhing in pain on the ground in the final moments of his life. Once again, this is- That was insane. There was really a video out on Twitter um, where you could clearly see Duck like sitting there pretty much dying on the ground. Really? Yeah, people be doing crazy stuff like pull their camera phone out and record anything. And then they posted it online? Yes. Now, I remember that crime too. I can't believe it's been three years already. Yeah, that's crazy. It's really been three years. But yeah, that's that's bro, you know how thirsty they was to get that man? Well they got his location. They got his man but I'm saying where they was at. Right. To go get him, that's they got his location. They rolled up on him. That's crazy. When I heard about it, I seen it on like going viral on Twitter, but I was seeing they started putting the location of where they was at. I'm thinking it happened in the hood or something. Back over on sixty third or something like that. Go was back in the hood chilling or something. I'm looking, I'm saying, that's downtown. Yeah. Hmm, nah, that's where the white folks be at. They ain't never do that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like, that's crazy. They got his location. I knew, I knew, a lot of murders go on solved in Chicago. I knew they was going to get them for that. I was like, ain't no way they getting off on that. Ain't no way. They going to take, they going to make sure they get them. You all done came downtown to, it, and brought all this nonsense from the city. Yeah, y'all out of there. Wait, I think the fans came and the swooped them up. Mm -hmm. These killers were so willing to inflict on the streets that they lived in and to the fellow citizens who lived there with them. I'm in the Gold Coast right now. They shot a bitchy duck, man. I don't know who shot him, man. I just can't ran into this, y'all. F man. They shoot in the Gold Coast of Chicago, bro. Chicago is not a safe place to be. You cannot even go downtown and enjoy your day without violence, bro. Look at this, bro. Look at this, bro. That's a Chicago rapper, man, by the name of FBG. After Duck's passing, this brazen, broad daylight hit would make international news, with reporters comparing the killing to a Chicago mob boss hit from the 30s. On August 4th, 2020, it looked like an old-time outfit attack here on Chicago's Oak Street. Two attack cars, four shooters, and a hail of bullets. But the target wasn't a 1930s gangster, he was a new millennium rapper, FBG Duck. It would appear that only seven minutes after the killing of FBG Duck, King Von would tweet oh a goat God. emoji, seemingly congratulating himself for pulling off a hit that he had wanted to do for more than yeah, 10 years. Was this so was quite good. possibly the ninth murder that King Von was responsible for, and the 11th that he had allegedly been connected to. And perhaps Von soon realized that he shouldn't be celebrating this one too hard, because the following day, he would tweet denying being involved and saying that everybody blames him. Von would later tweet that him and Duck settled their differences before his death. Oh, together. this is what I seen. I knew he was trolling for sure. Cause this like couple this after he passed a little bit, he started going on Twitter talking about how they had settled their differences and all this. He was trying to get a song with him. Right. Like he, he said me and Duck settled our differences right before he passed. We was talking about bringing everybody together as a whole and changing that community for the better. Then say y'all want to see a preview of a new video. Uh, 
King Von Future and FBG Duck, I was gonna I was gonna hold this to my album. I just knew he was trolling. I was like, it ain't no way. Think that they were even going to make a song together. This to me seems like an obvious lie, once again showcasing the psychopathic tendencies that King Von had when it came to killing. In public, he would say anything he could to take the heat off himself and appear innocent, but behind closed doors, he had allegedly plotted, paid for, and was celebrating Duck's murder. Von and other O Block affiliates would go on to release song after song referencing the murder of Duck. The day after Duck's death, King Von and Dirk dropped their new song, All These N-Words, a track which doesn't have any specific lyrics pertaining to Dirk, but in it, Von would rap about having bodies from way back, and the song's release essentially served as a victory lap for Von, Dirk, and anyone else who would have been happy about Dirk's demise. OTS Doody Low would reference people getting killed while shopping on the song Me and Doody Low with King Von, with King Von saying outright on the track that he gave out 100,000 and sent his boys coming, as well as saying that somebody got left shot in public before being rushed to the hospital. With these four lines of rapping, Von essentially broke down the entire hit and the price he'd allegedly paid for it to happen. Von would also rap on the song Don't Miss with DQ that Duck got nailed no hands, as well as lyrics that sing- Hey, don't miss on the way, y'all. They been asked for that one for it. A lot. That don't one miss. definitely on the way. That's on the list. We refer to the funeral shooting and the killings of Modell and Doc. On the posthumously released track Shameless Remix with Boss Top, Von would also rap that he's ducking no beef. And even Lil Durk would later release the song Should Have Ducked, dissing FBG Duck and saying that he's smoking him. Lil Durk would take things to the next level, even joking with country music stock. Dang, hey, Morgan Wally, you remember you saw my um, post, he was like, you react to country music now? Yeah. That's who I've been reacting to. Morgan Wally go hard, hang on, like, he hard. But, um... Dirk did a song with him. We gonna react to that too. Okay. Cause they keep asking me to react to it, but I already heard it when Dirk put it on his album. So I'm gonna let you hear it. But um, he did like a little crossover into the country world, whatever. But yeah, that's the only reason why I stopped it Morgan Wallen, a country singer. And collaborate on Morgan Wallen, but he loved duck hunting. This would lead to Wallen posting duck emojis on Dirk's post and later being forced to apologize after being informed that he'd actually been tricked into dissing Lil Dirk's dead ops. After FBG To the average person, like like if you we weren't doing good. reactions and you ain't know all this stuff now or watching this, you just think that was like some normal stuff he talking about. <laughs> nah, I mean yeah, this is different, man, because you know, I got into King Bond and they keep hearing all these stories like, yeah, this is you know, <laughs> I mean it's cr it's crazy because he's a great storyteller and you know, but, but all this stuff, I mean, it's 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 um yeah. Yeah. Interesting. It seemed like King Von and his team truly felt invincible. And pretty much from here until the day he died, King Von didn't seem to care who knew about the killings he was allegedly responsible for. In his music and on social media, he would troll endlessly and hint towards him and his friends being real killers, seemingly oblivious or just not caring that the whole world was beginning to learn what he had done. In August, Von is on Instagram Live with DQ from Oblock saying that there's no more FBG. Ain't that right, Big DQ? Ain't that right? <laughs> Von would also tweet that he knows the police have his phone tapped and that all they'll find out is that he gives people money every day. Money for what, though, Von? Von would also go on to tweet that 63rd was no more. And another saying, you heard what they say I did, but I did worse. Indicating that Von had done even more crimes that the public didn't know about. After this, we would see one famous example of King Von's crimes catching up with him in the music industry. He had actually been booked to perform at Rap Music Festival Rolling Loud in 2020. However, the pandemic of 2020 would shut that down and see the festival unable to go ahead in person. So instead, Rolling Loud would end up hosting a digital live stream event with rappers in September of 2020. And as part of this event, King Von would be interviewed in a shocking segment where the hosts were asking him questions that had been sent in from the comments, with some bright shy racologists submitting a question to the unsuspecting hosts who would read it, asking Von if he would ever collab with names of people he was rumored to have killed. With Von even being so amused by this question of bringing up his old bodies, he would even go and find his trusty shooter Muwap, putting his face on camera to show the reaction to these clueless interviewers dissing their dead enemies. They want to know if you do a feature with Modell, P5, Malcolm. You know them? Nah, 
All right, never mind. Yeah, we already, he already told us about Tuca. He said Tuca, one of his favorites to work with. <laughs> and they want to know about the Grease Place. <laughs> Ain't no way they this clueless. Oh, Grease Place coming soon. And I'll do a piece for all of them. Tell them to spend the money. Yeah, we need that bag. 100 racks. 100 racks of feet. I hope you take that. Hey, ain't no way. Say the name too much of the pictures again. You have to scroll up. I can't even see that. Y'all listen to the name she said when it's the pictures. We'll we'll get a clip of it and we'll we'll send it to you. Um I have ten names. Listen to the name she said when it's the pictures. Um, they want to know if you'd ever do a song with Young and Ace, Jay the Youngin, or and K. I don't know who that K or. No, say the other name you said. You gotta scroll up so I can read that. Can you do that for me? Hold on. It was. Now scroll up a little more, a little more. If you do a feature with Modell, Tyreek, P Five, or Malcolm. <laughs> look out, folks! Look. <laughs> <laughs> that's just that's a no, right? I'm assuming that's a no. <laughs> hey, folks, we're talking. You know, the police. <laughs> I don't even. Know. Hey, did it had no reaction to? They like what? But, so in other words, hey, these are people that supposedly he already been killed. Yeah, and these, these guys. These all no people need a reference during the video. Right, they don't they, have no idea. They who clueless. These people are. They're clueless. That's why I said y'all don't know me. <laughs> That's crazy. I ain't gonna lie. It didn't say y'all don't know me when you already rumored to have killed these people. That's insane. You talking about? I don't think they got it though. <laughs> hey, folks, we're talking. You know the police. <laughs> I don't even, who are the, I don't, I'm not they were so cool. Man, them people with bed, you bogus. What's that look the next question? No, that's crazy. They have me violent like that. You this is dead. Hey, you with that fuck 53rd. Man, you play The day after this, Vaughn would tweet saying, who wants clout? If you diss Vaughn, he will put you in the clouds. Possibly another reference to FBG Duck's Who's murder, whose nickname was Big Clout. A day after this, Vaughn would take to Instagram Live, saying that he's tired of people judging him because of YouTube videos about him. Yeah, I think I know because I watch YouTube. Yeah, I look what these people tell you. Yeah, I'm stupid. I'm like, yeah, I look what these people tell you. I'm like, yeah, I'm bad. I'm like, yeah, 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 that's what's going on. That's what I am. That's what's going on. So I'm laughing. I'm smiling right here. Because I'm, I'm super gay. This was an epic Instagram live where Vaughn would go in depth on a lot of things showcasing both sides of his personality. He would say that he's really a gangster like the videos say, but that he's also smiling about it because it makes him laugh, before also reminding fans not to play with him because he really is dangerous. I'm super gay. I'm like that, but I ain't know that. You know what I'm saying? I'm smiling. I'm playing with y'all. Don't play with me like that. I don't want to play with nobody like that for real. King Von would tell his fans that him and his old rock homie Louie killed their hearts. Kill you like I. Ah. Dick. Ah, dick suck his ass. Don't kill his ass. You got to fuck with them niggas. Don't kill his ass. Don't trip. And you ain't gonna talk about that no more. I wish Louie would. Ah, ah. Don't kill his ass. 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 At this point, and begins to ask the audience which ops he should talk about. Man, I like to talk about this. I'm gonna roll it today. I'm from right out that day. Who? What are you talking about? Drop the name of my. Vaughn goes on to say that people are just mad because he's tough and handsome, and because he knows that he did violent things to people who are in the comments on this live. With Vaughn even going as far as to say to his viewers, if he did something to you or your family, comment below and he will pin it. Me? Hey, not know you. Yeah, you know, I do, uh, 
Cause you had asked and counted it wrong. Yeah. But when we when we did add it up, it was added up to twelve. Right. 
that's what he just said. Seven he did personally, then five I guess he had involvement in. Got bodies from way back then. That's crazy that this stuff all come together like that. It's like rappers, they just, they can put stuff like this in their music and just be cool off, like get away with it, cause it sound like regular old rock music. Exactly, I mean, it sound like everything what else. What people want to hear? It sound like everything else. But these other people is capping. He not capping, but it sounds just like these other people that's capping. So you can't right. put two and two together for real. Right, that's, that's what, crazy. That's what I said. But you listen to his music, and I'm like, man, this got to sound a little too raw, like. <laughs> you know, like something about this one, it just, it just, it, it struck a chord. Like you know, they can feel it. Like there ain't no thinking, and he just saying it. Two plus two plus two. You know, like it's a real bodies. Man, that's crazy. He became a rapper, and five people who were killed by his crew, either while he was allegedly present, like in the case of Lil Mark, or allegedly on his orders, like would have been the case with FBG. But hell, some people would even count Dooski to King Von's body count. Because after all, Von would claim that he was smoking Dooski after his death, having tweeted not long before that that you can only smoke somebody if you have something to do with killing them. If you include that, that would make a full 12 bodies that King Von has been associated with over the years. Combine that with the fact that Von would end this song by boldly saying FFBG Duck, then I think it becomes pretty clear that he's trying to take responsibility for this killing. Another song on the album called The Code would see King Von rapping about splitting $100,000 with his team and being goated. A line that hits different when you know he allegedly paid $100,000 to have Duck killed and tweeting a goat emoji immediately after the murder took place. Von would only be alive for around a week following the release of this project, but recording numerous songs and freestyles that referenced his alleged murders, like King Von's Audio Mac Bless the Booth freestyle, where he straight up rapped that he had seven bodies. On the 2nd of November, he would tweet that people want to kill him with a yawning emoji. Clearly, Von was not scared. In fact, one of the very last things that Von did was an interview with DJ Academics, and a big part of this interview was the discussion of Von's beats. Academics would press Von about his earlier tweets, suggesting that Von had been lying about him and FBG Duck squashing their beef, with Von denying that he was lying and suggesting that somebody else had deleted their DMs. You, you know you're in, you know you're in uh, Duck to the makeup. His mom came out. You in Duck to the makeup. Gang, how you gonna see that? See, this, see this, this ain't right. His mom said that was never happened. His mom was knocked down. I ain't never met his mom. I don't know his mom. You see what I'm saying? I'll talk to him. You see what I'm saying? Make fake. And then they deleted all our DMs so I can't show him the... I don't know why they do that. From here, a flustered King Von is trying to sidestep his past people duck, saying that they just went to school together. They just make it look real crazy to y'all. These just really people we all went to school with. Nah, that's just crazy to me. I can't do nothing. That's how they make it. You got to understand, like you said, they break that down the street. We went to school, that it ain't, it ain't just it, you know? And then, you know, it's just that we, we ain't cool no more. It, it, it was, you know? But it ain't that serious, like, it's to the point where, all right, let's now let's talk about it. Let's, <laughs> you know that both of us rap, we can, we can fix that. We can stop all the violence, all this shit, that shit. That's, we got a voice, you see what I'm saying? Like, we tell Chicago fall back, tell Chicago fall back. Eventually, academics would ask Vaughn how he felt when he heard about Duck's death and Vaughn would start slowly eating cereal, saying that he was hurt by Duck's death in an incredibly unconvincing manner. Were you saddened by the news that he was murdered? Man, I ain't going to sleep that night. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe it. At a certain point, Vaughn tells academics <laughs> that Vaughn would then put the camera away from his face, and we would hear what sounds like Vaughn and his friends laughing off camera. And before Vaughn came back on camera, for a very brief moment, we got a glimpse of Von's friend from O-Block, BJ, laughing in the background. Hold on, man. <laughs> Only time I tell you what's shit up. Only time I tell you what's shit up. Only time I tell you what's my shit up. I can't help but notice the fact that Von is eating cereal whilst discussing the killing of Duck. Well, you eat just, just, just um, cereal straight out of the box, no milk? Oh, okay. I've said it before that I believe Von is a cereal guy, but honestly, he's mentioned cereal <laughs> so many times during his part. career, it really wouldn't surprise me if this was some kind of cryptic message that he was using to signal to fans that he saw himself as a serial killer with Duck as his latest victim. 
He would strangely tweet about how much he loves his cereal after a series of alleged murders. I don't know about that. I think he might have like cereal. cereal is the first thing he does after shooting someone. He would promote dirt cereal uh, whilst they were both yeah. on the run from the Atlanta shooting at the Varsity, telling people on Twitter to buy the cereal whilst waving a clip of a gun, and regularly posting himself on social media eating cereal. And he would also be eating cereal when he told the world that he wanted to perform at FBG Duck's funeral. Yeah, cereal would be busted, so. They said King Bar featuring FBG Duck. I said that's what they want to see. Stop that, man. I'll perform at his funeral. Then, when we finally saw the actual murder of FBG Duck and academics asked him about it, at that very moment, Von would decide to start eating cereal too. Maybe it's a stretch, but that day when academics called Von, he probably knew he would be asked about FBG Duck. And he made sure to have that box of cereal within arm's reach so that the whole world would see him crunching on cereal at that exact moment. Sadly for Von, that's soon after this stretch. interview, he would end yeah, up on the other right. side of the yeah, gun, getting shot doing. himself and ultimately losing his life. But in a final twist of irony, it would turn out that despite being connected to so many murders in his home city, Von would seemingly end up losing his life in an altercation in another state, and as a result of a petty rat beef that had nothing to do with his violent past in the street. Man, I ain't gonna lie. I found out the same time Lil Dirk found out. What? Well, I ain't find out the exact same. Well, everybody had, um... He probably gonna talk about it in these last 30 minutes, whatever. Dirk went live, like on Instagram Live, like they've been doing. He was on live because the song Back in Blood with Pooh Shiesty had just released that we had reacted to. Mm -hmm. That had just released. Dirk was on live, you know, promoting the song, whatever, had the song playing. He turned up. All you start seeing in the comments, Vaughn got shot, Vaughn got shot, Vaughn got shot. Bunch of people, and I'm on this live, like I seen this in real time. Like, you know, eventually people reposted it and stuff like that. That's how everybody seen it. Right. But I'm like literally on Dirk Live after he didn't drop the song that night, whatever. I'm looking. Um I keep seeing the comments. It took Dirk a little minute to realize that he looked at it. Like you can see him looking at his phone weird, then the live was cut off. I'm like, nah. I first of all, I'm like, how are these people on here know this? That's my first thought. I'm like, bro, y'all, I'm thinking people on that, you know, people like to troll and stuff. I'm like, that's nothing to play about. I'm like, y'all on here trolling and stuff. But then when he cut the live off, I said, oh, this might be for real. But I didn't find out, like, we didn't get the official because, like, nothing came out on the internet that night because it happened so late. Right. And when I woke up the next morning, that's when I found out he was in the hospital or whatever, fighting it. Throughout King Bond's career, he was connected that to was a female crazy. rapper by the name of Asian Bone with fans often speculating on whether their supposed relationship was genuine or simply a fake celebrity romance for plan. Apparently, Asian met King Von just after Lil Durk had signed to the same label as her, with the label arranging a celebrity basketball game where Durk would bring Von onto the court whilst Asian Doll was on the sidelines. It's the first time I saw we was in, uh, at just the best. It's, I heard it was in New York. I didn't look way up there in the sky, look. You know, I ain't, I ain't saying that to her. She was looking decent, she was looking good. Well, I ain't saying that to her, she was like a hoopness. And they ain't had no jewelry and all that, no money like that. So I'm like, she had a big ass Gucci dress, Gucci this and Gucci that. And we was playing basketball, just meeting them, we had Dirk. Oh. Dirk had just got signed to my label, I don't know. So then the agent having a, a celebrity basketball game, do you want to do it? I'm like, hell yeah, yeah. I'll play basketball, but they don't want to play basketball. So when they told me who to play, they like, meet me or Dirk. But so I remember Vaughn playing basketball, playing me, me sitting on the side. He playing, he was playing so much rough. I was like, why the fuck is he so rough? He was playing rough, y'all. Like, he was rough. Like, he was jumping up. He was doing all type of rough shit. He probably trying to show out the whole time for me. I ain't know. I'm looking at his ass like he's crazy. Apparently, King Von would see Asian Doll again in the studio and at a release party with Lil Durk, where they would flirt and eventually agree to go on a date. But then I still began the studio. She did a feature with Durk. And I started grabbing him to try and talk to him. He laughed and shit. Then I see again now. I'm, I'm fake drunk at the love um, release party for Durk. I see her, but I ain't know she was fake talking to somebody else right now. But I'm still on her, but I'm off with uh, whatever, the, the licking and shit. So I'm grabbing her hands, trying to talk to him. Bun just kept bothering me. And I'm just like, bro, who is this boy? He just kept bothering me, bro. Bothering me, bothering me, bothering me. We walking now, y'all. I don't even know this man. This man got his hand around my waist. I'm like, whoa. Nah, I take their phone when I get in this DM and they talk to my brother. Ooh. <laughs> 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 Man, talk to my brother while I'm taking that damn shit. It's him. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I said, no, no, no. I said no a million, a million times. No. No, 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 bitch. I said no so much I got tired of saying no. I'm like, maybe I'm going to date. As soon as I said okay, 
I said, okay, this man going to call me in second. She sent the number and she, I was saying she lived in Atlanta. Now, I went, I go to the crib, now Dirk out of town. He left his truck in my car, he got a track on, baby, raw. <laughs> so I, ooh, I got Dirk's car today. <laughs> so I'm going to pick up, I tell him I'm going to take out this. King Von would actually pick up Asian for their first date in Lil Durk's Jeep Trackhawk, the very same truck that they caught their attempted murder charge in in Atlanta. But in the end, the date between Asian Doll and King Von was apparently a success. You know I ain't slow. I knew the Dirk car. I ain't thinking, oh my god, he got a car and they got 300 on it. And like, this Dirk car, because I had already seen Dirk post a car. But it made it was so cute, good, like, these sticking together, that's crazy. They, like, Dirk helping him out, letting him to the car for the weekend, just so it can impress me. So I got a little money. I only got like, I was felt tired, like six hundred dollars too much. And a little outfit, a nice outfit, my aunt's outfit that on. <laughs> took some of dirt cologne and shit. <laughs> <laughs> took a kind shot and go pick up to got the eat and shit. So he came pick me up. He kept saying he kept calling and making sure I was gonna get ready. He's like, get ready. He asked the day to get cold. So he he had a jacket on, he was trying to give me the jacket, but he was cold. So I just got under his jacket with him. And it's like my chest touched his chest, our hearts touched each other's hearts. It's just everything just connected when I hugged him after the first day. And then we went to the house. They would make a connection and eventually make their relationship official. Asian Doll would even release a song called Grandson about King Von on Valentine's Day 2019, with him appearing in the music video. In a March 2019 interview with Lil Durk, a shy King Von would reveal publicly that he was indeed dating Asian Doll. King Von, I'm saying he in a relationship too. Yeah. Shout, shout out Asian Doll. <laughs> okay! Yeah, he gonna hit, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, man! <laughs> He looking at you like, come on, man. So <laughs> Bond would go on to drop light-hearted tweets about his super savage friends, laughing at people who only knew him online as Asian Doll's boyfriend. But the two of them would indeed be an item, and she would need to deal with the baggage of dating a super savage. When Bond got arrested for attempted murder, Asian would be in tears over her boyfriend's incarceration. I've been on the plane for 20 hours. Everybody. Don't, I miss my, I was crying. I miss my boyfriend, my husband, everything. But I'm better. He ain't gonna need to be out here turned up, so I got all my crying out on the plane. Now I'm gonna just turn up. Bone would even call Instagram Live is how um, cool agent. a lot of people feel they connected to their to they favorite artists or something, though. No, somebody. So you talk to them through the comments, most of the time they're not looking. If, if it's like. Dirk or somebody big, most of the time they're not looking, reading the comments or nothing, but... but they might pick up one or two yeah, they might respond yeah. to it. Yeah. To like, keep the conversation on itself going. Yeah. You're like, okay. But, like, you got, you got even not just rappers, I mean, anybody can go live, but, like, you got, um... Tell me like people go Facebook live. Yeah, it's all the same thing. I think, I want to say... Instagram had it first, then Facebook had it live. I don't know. One or two had it, but they, Instagram and Facebook together, so... Uh. Well, from jail, joking that he would be beating her up when he gets home. Hey, my jail. I miss him. Man, what? <laughs> Come on, home. Tell me about you. I'm always talking about you. What? You crazy. If it was good, yeah, I'm talking about you. I don't know what I'm talking about. That's bad. I don't know what's good or bad. If it's bad, I'm going to know what's yours. I'm going to be mad. Nah, I'm just going to be asked first, ask questions later if it's bad. I ain't got time. You're not beating me up. <laughs> We're not gonna do that. Eventually, Von would return home and be reunited with Asian Doll. But ironically, this time, it would be Asian getting Von in trouble. While out on bail for that attempted murder, King Von would end up getting into a fist fight with a man in a studio who had apparently called Asian Doll a bitch, being sent back to jail for a brief period. Somebody called my girlfriend yesterday. 
fell out of my hand, bro. I was over beating his ass. And despite Von winding up in jail for it, it would appear that Asian Doll would actually appreciate Von's protection, calling him her bodyguard on Twitter, with Von himself saying that he wishes she wasn't a rapper so that he could keep her home and protect her, saying that he doesn't trust her around other rappers. But isn't it nice to have somebody in the same industry as you? No, that ain't I'd rather have. You know, I wish you, you know, I can't say I wish you wasn't a rapper or nothing like that, but it'd be better if I knew that she's at the house instead of going around all these people that ain't around and damn what's going on now i'm just thinking how you think what she doing why she answer the phone and that's how she be she the knows the thing that. that's what i'm saying like if it's I wish my nigga was in the damn house <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you, you didn't like it nigga and she had to work with him i'm not gonna say nothing because you know you gotta be you're like i gotta, you gotta, gotta be sure with yourself man. yeah i know i'm that so. bob was clearly very possessive about asian dog even tweeting that he would kill somebody for messing with her. With that in mind, it's no surprise that eventually it would be another rapper that would seemingly get in between Von and Asian. And that rapper would be none other than Baton Rouge gangster rap superstar NBA Youngboy. Now, King Von had a strange relationship with Youngboy over the years. King Von would be dissing NBA Youngboy all the way back in February 2019. Youngboy? Why? Damn! King Von would also diss Youngboy again on social media, saying that his music is full of lies. Youngboy talking about on this song, bro. What? He talking crazy on this man. Oh, yeah? He ain't in life, though. Oh! I'm just a f***ing man. Bang! You got cap in your right hand. Hey, you got cap in your right hand. Hey, but at other times, it seemed that Von quite admired Youngboy. He'd often play his music and even tweeted welcome home to him in August when he was free, as well as being seen on social media copying several of young boys' mannerisms and quotes. The boy is my grandma raised me. You, me. you know I ain't no hope. What up? My grandma raised me. You know I ain't no hope. But perhaps King Von was looking to catch young boy lacking rather than admiring him, because clearly both Lil Durk and King Von were feeling competitive with NBA young boy during this period. In October 2019, Lil Durk would reply to a DJ Academics tweet, claiming that NBA young boy was the best street rapper since the Chicago way, with Lil Durk suggesting that Von was a real street rapper who could actually compete with young boy. In February 2020, Von would tweet indicating that Youngboy was holding on to a song featuring both of them and telling him that he should release it. It would seem that Von and Asian Doll were on good terms around this time, with Von showing off a bunch of gifts and a love letter from her just a few days after Valentine's. However, by May 2020, Von would be tweeting that he was going through a rough breakup. Then, the following month, tweeting that Asian Doll was acting crazy and trying to embarrass other women. But a few days later, Von would tweet seemingly indicating that he was back on good terms with Asian Doll. Then, the following month, Von would tweet saying that he doesn't care what a woman does if it's not his girlfriend. A few weeks after that, in August, Von would tweet saying that he takes things too far when he gets mad, and tweeting saying that people won't believe the woman that he just made a hit with. That same day, images would surface of Von spending private time with the mother of NBA Youngboy's child, a woman named Jania. And later, speculation swirled that Von and her may have even created a- Why B don't play by his baby mama Jania. That's like the girl that he, um, he blew up, he was with her. Throughout when you you know young boy when we get to young boy young boy blew up at sixteen his first hit song and um he was with her all the way up until you know till they broke up but he had kind of broke into the game and became famous and all that while he was with her so he don't really play by her I guess that's like his probably like his first real love something like that right. had his first had a child with her and Vaughn and then yeah when this came out Vaughn was um had did a they, this picture, wait, you can feel that explain. This picture came out. Sex tape during their time together, after King Von tweeted that he could post a video that would make somebody stop claiming their own kids. And later, King Von's sister would also indicate that she had seen a video of Jania sleeping with somebody. DM, DMs would also later circulate from somebody who was apparently with them when they met, suggesting that Von and Jania had indeed slept together, not recorded music. And Von would later rap on the song was gold with PNB Rock, lyrics that seemed to suggest that somebody's baby mother was bad in bed. One of his friends, 600 Breezy, would congratulate King Von publicly for sleeping with his ox baby mother and saying rapper K, 
suggesting that Von and his friends were looking to see NBA Youngboy dead. However, Junior would take to social media to deny the rumors and say that she was simply working on music with Von to make money for her son. We walked to the table to play the little game after my studio session and I went home. That's it. Y'all trying to make stories out of nothing. I don't that me. Like I said, I don't quit no music. I didn't work. Well, that was we have a song, song they out. made. Y'all wasn't supposed to know, but it is what it is now. We have a song coming out. So when the song come out, y'all won't quit. Just know it's hardest. I'm just trying to get my money to take care of my son. <laughs> Period. On top of that, DMs would also circulate suggesting that Von had indeed only worked on music with Junior to make Asian Doll now. However, Asia would later come out and claim that the story wasn't true about them working on a song together, suggesting that she had actually found romantic DMs between Von and the mother of Young Boy's child. Now I've seen that in the DMs, I've been saying, none of this gonna survive. So all that song that you know, did. The day after those pictures of Von's rendezvous with Junior surfaced, Young Boy would post a picture with a caption saying that he's going to make sure that his son grows up and sleeps with King Von's daughter since he's trolling him with his baby mother. And while this was all going on, another Chicago Black Disciple rapper, close to King Von, Lil Reese, was claiming to be planning to beat up NBA Young Boy's artist, Quando Rondo. Quando would reply to this, saying that Reese won't do nothing. <laughs> A few weeks after this, King Von would seemingly threaten Youngboy and Quando Rondo, tweeting on September the 7th, 2020, that he hopes that God has room up there for more dead people. This seemingly provoked a response from Quando Rondo's right-hand man, Lil Tim, the next day, who warned Von and people from Chicago about messing with Quando. And this would seemingly be followed by a response from King Von the next day, tweeting, reminding the world that he has been fighting his whole life and that he hits hard as hell. The same day that all of this is going on with Von and Junior, NBA Youngboy would drop a snippet of an unreleased song. This song later turns out to be the track Dead Trolls. And in this song, Youngboy claims, like Von, to be responsible for seven murders. And rapping that he's going to catch someone from out of town who is chasing after a girl and kill them. Youngboy would also rap that his ops are mad because they can't get a feature from him. Perhaps a hint to a potentially uncleared collaboration between the two artists being held back by Youngboy as one of King Von's earlier tweets seemed to suggest. Some people would later claim that this song actually predicted King Von's death, with one lyric saying that he's planning to kill someone in Atlanta after a show. But chances are, that's just a creepy coincidence. But it's no coincidence that Youngboy dropped this snippet the very day that Von was running around with the mother of his child. A day later, Von would tweet claiming not to have a girlfriend and to simply be focusing on his career. But a few days after that, Von would tease a snippet of a new song of his own, a track titled Too Real. In this song, he would rap that he's going to expose somebody and that he's going to kill somebody because of a rap beef. Then, in September, Von would jump on Instagram Live to address his ongoing beef with NBA Youngboy, saying that he's not in beefs in the music industry and that he doesn't want to beef in other states, but also saying that he will beef people for no reason if they don't like him. Now, look, look, they ain't ain't told nobody else. <laughs> told the people I've been having beef with in the streets, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't want to be a tool with nobody from all in another town. For no reason, like you gotta be a tour with somebody for a reason. Just know we're a tour, we're a tour gang, we can't get nothing out you see what I'm saying? I'm the type of, I don't gotta know why we're a tour or nothing. I ain't really gotta tell me why you don't like me. Don't even tell me why you don't like me. I don't even care. Just let me know you don't like me. You see what I'm saying? Let me know how you don't like me. That's what it is. Let me know. I'm like, all right, you know what I'm saying? Let me know. But I'm so gangster that I don't need a reason. I don't, it don't gotta be no reason. We can be into it, like, I don't care. There don't gotta be a reason, for real. I, I'm just two people, I, it don't gotta be no reason, I don't know why, I don't care why. But it can be that, you see what I'm saying? Well, I, I like to know why I'm into it. I like to, I, I need to, cause I ain't no goofy. Like this. And then I play hard, I play, I ain't trying to lose, I ain't gonna, eh, I can't lose to nobody, but oh, lose to who? Who? Who, Lord? Who, who I'm gonna lose to? Oh, tell him. You been knowing me, Lord. You got to knock on how that thing I do. Tell him, you been hitting that too. How you been chaining him next, Lou? Clearly, from out of state. Probably young boy. And despite tweeting that he still isn't doing relationships, in September, Von and his sister were seen in the club with young boy's baby mama once again. Two days ago, Jania was spotted in the club with King Von's sister, and King Von was also there as well. 
You couldn't see them together, but you know they were together if you know. With all this going on, Asian Doll would be feeling the heat. At the start of October, Asian Doll would go on Instagram Live to address the situation with young boy and Von. Denying that Von embarrassed her and saying that if she's single, then it's got nothing to do with her. Nobody embarrassed me, gang. Y'all need to get off my dick with that. Like, nobody embarrassed me. Nobody. It's nothing nobody did to embarrass me. I was not embarrassed. Like, damn. Y'all hoes mad about a tweet. Like, y'all, like, dude, don't even know me. Clown. So, y'all hoes get left for me. For Smack the shit out of on you, man. You crazy. I don't give no f I'm a real bitch at the end of the day. Like I said, you would never see me sweat. You would never see me go outside behind nobody. I don't give a f who you is, friend, anybody. Mind your business. What a simple like that don't have nothing to do with me. I'm not stressing that sh I'm not tweeting up nothing. They don't have to do with me, gang. Nothing. What somebody single? So what? What they do? I don't give a that's what got Von later went live on October the 11th, 2020 with Asian Doll. Apparently their first live together since their breakup with them appearing to be on fairly good terms. Also in October, King Von would begin tweeting to promote a new song called Mine Too. A song essentially dissing NBA Youngboy and saying that he's not going to beef about a girl because Youngboy's baby mama Junia is his too. He'd also have a lyric saying that he has beef in NOLA or Louisiana where Youngboy is from and saying that Youngboy is acting like a gangster but now he's got to show Von whether or not he really is a gangster. After this snippet release, Von would tweet saying once somebody has slept with a girl, he doesn't want her anymore. With this possibly being a hint towards Asian Doll moving on to NBA Youngboy. With it actually being rumoured that Asian had met up with Youngboy at some point during this time. With later DMs from people in NBA Youngboy's camp suggesting that Asian Doll had indeed hooked up with Youngboy before King Von passed away. And Asian Doll would seemingly admit to hooking up with Youngboy twice on her song No Exposure. Apparently Youngboy even had access to Asian Doll's phone and Instagram account during the time they had spent together as he had reportedly messaged his producer through Asian Doll's Instagram account. And then, only days before King Von would end up losing his life, on November the 4th, 2020, Youngboy posted a snippet of a song that he made with Asian Doll, a song with the ominous title Meet the Reaper. Von would be seen listening to the snippet of this young boy and Asian doll song, later tweeting that the song is trash, followed by yet another tweet alluding to there being a sex tape between him and NBA Youngboy's baby mother. Von would then say that him and Junior's song is way better than Asian doll and NBA Youngboy's song, and saying that it has a better cover up, another hint that he might have compromising pictures of Youngboy's baby mother. Then Von would backtrack, saying that he's just playing, and that if Asian doll is happy, he's happy. But the song still sounds trash. Then rehashing the lyric from his song Mine Too, once again indicating that Asian Doll Engineer are his girl too. The day before he was killed, King Von was incredibly active on Twitter. He would diss NBA Youngboy, tweeting that rappers are pussy and that he's not one of them, he warn people to approach him with caution, and he would say that his ops are acting gangster, but that's not what they're really like, tweeting that he's not hurt, just retaliating to the disrespect he's received with no feelings involved, suggesting that what was going on was just entertainment, with Von eventually saying in another deleted tweet, that he's going to lead by example because he's older than Youngboy and saying that he's quitting the beef because many wars have started over a woman and that he's not beefing Youngboy. He would say that they're sharing the same women and that doesn't matter. And then in King Von's last recorded interview before his death with DJ Academics, he would touch upon his beef with NBA Youngboy since coming into the industry. Von would deny that this was a real beef, saying that they have the same girls and the internet has just blown it out of proportion. Hey, you know, people told me, people told me you and Youngboy was beefing or something like that. Said something about it. Yeah. What happened, Von? What's going on with you, man? They be saying a lot. It's like we got the same issues and holes and, and dear. You know how the internet are trying to make it. Don't tell me I got problems over girls. No, it's the internet, gang. It's the, it's the, you know, they are trying to make it like that because it's the internet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then, and then, you know how females get females are trying to make it like that because they female. And they're trying to make it like one, one, one hard. They're trying to, it be all types. But it ain't nothing too scared. Nothing. You should worry about. Unfortunately for Von, things would be very serious indeed. And the very night of that final interview, King Von himself would escalate things and get more than he bargained for. And little did he know that this feud over women would end up being the beef that would take his life. After the release of his debut album, Welcome to Oblock, King Von's story would come to an abrupt end. The week before his death, King Von would be reflecting on Instagram just how far he'd come and reminding himself to enjoy these times because he knew there would be hard times coming. Oh, I'm through this. Just losing so many people, guy. I lost so many people, man, going through this. That's crazy. But now look where we at right now, you see what I'm saying? Like times like this, you gotta, you gotta take it in. I just told my homie, them y'all gotta take it in. You see what I'm saying? Look for me. I remember what day one, this shit. And we in winning, man. We living on camp, and we ain't dead, and we ain't in jail.
and we ain't broke, and we ain't, you know, life you go, you gonna be down again, like, like, I'm up right now. It's gonna be tired, I'm gonna go through some more, I'm gonna go through some, you know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna think back to this time, I could always repeat from this time, like, everything was going good in my life, everything was going, that time, everything going good right now, like, right now, everything going good, I ain't got no complaints, I ain't even mad about nothing. I know I done lost this, I don't understand a lot of but I ain't even mad about it. Sadly, the good times would end suddenly, and Bond would end up losing his life at the very height of his career. His album, Welcome to O'Block, had debuted at the unlucky number 13 on the Billboard charts, ironically, just one position above the NBA Youngboy's album, Top, that had already spent eight weeks on the chart after going number one. Then, just after midnight on the 5th of October 2020, Bond would tweet his location for the evening. He was playing a show at Atlanta Club Opium. Bond would go live on Instagram on the way to the club, seemingly in good spirits and rapping along to his own music. He would do a live pre-show with the name of the club pinned, and he would be seen on Instagram, posted up, smoking hookah with his entourage of O'Block natives. He would go on to play that concert at Opium, where he would be seen jamming out on stage at the club, surrounded by his team and shouting out somebody in the crowd for wearing Not From 63rd merch, as well as dissing girls who were acting stuck up at the front of the show. I feel about it and down half like y'all don't see them all. I don't see them all fucking this bitch, gang. I see you got that 63 shirt back there, my. This is your man. Give that game. Give that game. I love it. I love it. Yeah, you know what's all I love for this. Feel up, shit up. I done jumped out on that one from the whole block. That going crazy. I want to thank everybody. You know the going on. Stress game. It's a lot of bad holes there. I've been walking through them. Damn, this is shit in here. Look, walking around. You know, we trying to party now. Pulling this bitch. I ain't gonna lie. We got the little bougie. They got the bougie right here. They right here. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna stop that shit. Man, it's one of the tears up. Yeah, I'm gonna stop that shit. Why I got these big bands in this? Just after 1am, King Bond would retweet a Young and Ace lyric with a caption saying that his crew are going to catch somebody and he sees them as food. Because while King Bond is performing at Opium, Quando Rondo and his entourage are fresh off recording a new music video for the song The Drop, being seen on social media showing off an array of high-powered weapons that they're holding onto. After finishing his show, King Von would be seen leaving Opium in an SUV. And interestingly, that truck can be heard playing the NBA Youngboy song My Window as it was driving away. Apparently Von would confuse his team by choosing not to go back to his Airbnb as his security crew initially thought. Instead, Von would take a last minute and unexplained detour to the Monaco hookah lounge where Quando Rondo was. With King Von's manager, 100k track, later telling DJ Vlad that his team was blindsided by the change of plan. He went over there to the after party and then his driver and his homeboy let us know that we was redirected. We're thinking we're gonna go to the Airbnb or the hotel. But around three twenty. Hmm. Sound. I was checking on I don't want to go. Thought I heard a call. Did you hear a call? let us know that we was redirected. We're thinking we're going to go to Airbnb or the hotel. At around 3.20 on November the 6th, King Von would find himself outside the Monaco Hooper Lounge in Atlanta. Perhaps he knew Quando Rondo would be there, or perhaps it was just a coincidence. All we know is that while there, Von approached Quando Rondo and began assaulting him with a flurry of punches, with Quando's close friend Lil Ten opening fire and striking King Von four times. Now this the, when I told you how he died, Somebody came up to the car and told him that Quando was over there. Mm -hmm. See now, now that I got all this information, because I, I at the time people didn't know. I don't think people knew for real. Like I mean, at least not me, because I wasn't in tune like that, like keeping up with all that beef and stuff. So I didn't know that he had like legit beef with Young Boy and them. Because after they were saying Young Boy and them set this up, it didn't seem like a setup at all. But now knowing this information, especially knowing that he did detour from. You know, you got all these black trucks. They expecting you to go back to the Airbnb. His driver detour off here because he want to go somewhere else. Cause he had, cause he had already known Quando's finna be there. And then when dude came up to the car telling him Quando over here, that's just dude doing what Vaughn already told him to do. Like see if Quando in him here or whatever, whatever. Or could that have just been a coincidence? Quando and him having to be there, and dude came up to the truck telling Vaughn. That's that's now. So now I don't know. 
Cause at first I thought it was like this is just coincidence. Before I was blaming dude that came up to the truck talking about talking about Quan doing them over there right. for Vaughn getting out. But now I don't know. He could have could have been all set up. Could have already t DM somebody. Like, we finna be here. Pull up. Whatever. Something come crazy. Security footage of the fight and subsequent shooting would circulate online after the incident. What happened that night is that Vaughn walked up to Quando Rondo and sucker punched him outside the club and proceeding to beat him up in front of a huge crowd. But after throwing a few punches, Quando's friend Little Tim would jump out of the car and shoot King Vaughn four times. Vaughn's friends from Oblock, Slutty and Louie would attempt to shoot Little Tim, leaving him wounded but not dead. After shooting Little Tim to the ground, they would attempt to execute him on the floor, but the gun would jack. Whilst this is going on, a wounded King Von continues to wrestle with Quando Rondo on the floor. At this point, Von's other friend, Moodwok, would approach, punching Quando Rondo to the ground and separating him from Von. Meanwhile, after failing to execute Little Tim, Slutty and Louie would attempt to flee the scene, without realising that they were running directly towards undercover police officers who would open fire, believing that their lives were in danger too. The police would kill Slutty and leave Louie in critical condition. Moodwok and other... Damn, both of them got shot by the cops for three seconds. Yeah, like he just said, Slutty died. Louis, he ended up, he got it like a head shot. They weren't sure if he was gonna make it. He ended up making it. He just actually recently, what made me even think about this is um recently, like a couple of weeks ago, I want to say, he just did an interview. I don't know if it was for the first time or it might have been for the first time. He just did an interview with um somebody. We might have to react to that because he was talking about this whole situation and stuff. But um. Yeah, so when this happened, when everybody got the news that Vaughn was shot and all this, it was coming out, like, police reports was coming out. Like, look, like, people were somehow getting recordings of the police and stuff, because they were saying that the undercover cop bullet is what hit Vaughn and not Lil' Tim and them. But then until video came out, we seen, obviously, it was Lil' Tim, but they were saying it was just a bunch of stuff going on. Because you see the video, it's a bunch of people running up from Vaughn and them group. Vaughn beating up Quando, cause they all behind, cause remember he left them, so the, they all trailing behind, cause they had to find out where he was at at first. Right. So they, now they all running up, cause they see Vaughn over there beating up Quando. Lil Tim jumped out. Lil Tim, I know people be mad at him and stuff, cause they love King Vaughn and all this and all this, but in reality, King Vaughn once started it, two, Lil Tim did what he supposed to do. Lil Tim wasn't no rapper at this time. Lil Tim, he that's his brother Quando getting beat up. You gonna protect the bread, the bread one. You gonna protect the money. He did exactly what they, what both of them rap about. They rap about they, they, they homies kept getting bodies and all this. But Tim jumped out and did what y'all like to hear, and then y'all got mad at him for doing that. So it, you can't even look at it no kind of way. I know, you know, you sad Vaughn died and all this, but end of the day, he put himself in that position. The danger too. The police would kill Slutty and leave Louis in critical condition. Muwa and other Oblock members would drag King Von's limp body to a waiting car and rush him to the hospital. But what's even more crazy is that Quando Rondo would take Lil Tim to the very same hospital that King Von and his team were at, with Quando Rondo even going live showing himself trying to get Tim into the hospital and get assistance. DHF Bezu would later post saying that he'd seen Quando at the hospital, suggesting that they would have shot him if he didn't start recording. But ultimately, King Von would be rushed into emergency surgery in critical condition after the shooting. He would ultimately die in hospital, with media all around the world waking up to the news and reporting on his death. Yeah, Rick and Sean, according to GBI, rapper King Von and his group were at Opium Nightclub before making their way here to Monaco Hookah Lounge, then to the parking lot where chaos ensued. Believe it or not, this all playing out right in front of two Atlanta police officers. One of them was actually inside his patrol car, or next to his patrol car with his blue lights on. APD responding, attempting to stop the shooting, but it was too late. He hit like one officer, they did respond, and he tried to protect himself and stop one more. The investigation on this shootout will continue. No officers were injured during this incident. According to GBI, this is the 82nd officer involved shooting that they've been requested to investigate in 2020. After King Von died, some of the friends of people Von was rumored to have killed would post on social media. Billionaire Black would post a picture of Modell McCambry, and the person who was shot with Modell the night he was killed posted a picture of FBG Duck saying that Duck would be happy greeting Vaughn in the afterlife. P5, aka Crack's cousin, would post on Facebook saying that he had been praying for the day that King Vaughn would be killed, whilst other friends of Crack would post tributes now that their friend's killer was no longer alive. Apparently, Crack's little brother would even post saying that they caught two of the three people who were present when Crack was killed, and suggesting that they were disappointed not to be the ones who killed Vaughn. 
Outside of Chicago, affiliates of NBA Youngboy like Big B would mock King Von in an Instagram story, saying that it was funny that he was the one who started the beef and dissing NBA Youngboy, and now he was the one dead. The jokes on you, this now you're getting ripped out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Meanwhile, people on Von's side would express their heartbreak at losing their main man. Asian Doll claimed to want to die when the news came out and Lil Durk would mourn the loss of his twin. Even rap's number one superstar Drake would post a tribute to Von after he passed. NBA Youngboy's biggest enemy, Fredo Bang, would also mourn the loss of Von too. 12 days after his final tweet, somebody would take control of King Von's Twitter account, releasing a statement thanking everybody who supported Von whilst he was alive. There would be a media frenzy around King Von's death. Funeral homes were also refusing to take King Von's body due to fears of violence at the ceremony. And when the family finally found a place that was willing to host the funeral for Chicago's most famous killer, they were forced to have it at one day's notice. Eventually, Von would get the peaceful burial his family had hoped for, with Von being laid to rest in Chicago on November the 14th, 2020 with pictures of Von's funeral program and casket being posted on social media. But being such a divisive figure in Chicago gang politics, Von's enemies continue to disrespect his gravesite to this very day. Naturally, Von's death sparked a strong response from many of his supporters. 600 Breezy claimed to be headed to NBA Youngboy's hood at 150 miles an hour with the steps. BJ, who was- I ain't gonna lie, this was a wild couple of days after he died, cause dude 600 Breezy, another rapper from Chicago, he posted that. And like everybody was reposting stuff, and I could, you know, they put all this on social media for everybody to see. So they so, gave NBA Youngboy all the credit for taking out King Von. Yeah, the fans give him the credit, even though when you watch the video, it just looked like a coincidence that he ran into Quando. And no, Von, it don't. You can't say Youngboy set it up when Von went to Quando and right. started beating him up. But Youngboy fans, they gonna give him all the credit for it. Right. But anyway, uh, all these people that was that was um. From Chicago, that was cool run and stuff. They were posting all this stuff. Dude, 600 Breezy was talking about he 150 miles. They He started posting Mississippi. They're like posting states that's closer and closer to um, Louisiana. And we like, they posting all this stuff. I'm like, bro, y'all, first of all, this is incriminating. But <laughs> but like, um, you know, 600 Breezy, one of them dudes, I think he, he just be on the internet talking. From Yeah to be headed to NBA Youngboy's hood at 150 miles an hour with the steppers. BJ, who was also shot the night that King Von was killed, would also post saying that their ops are cursed now that the O-Block is after them. Meanwhile, NBA Youngboy affiliate Michi replied and said that people only really slide in silence. Right the whole day, going on hey, I'm scary. Knowing all that can get on that, all that shit, my real don't speak. Hey, if you go do something, do something, you don't come in on city. And now that you want to see that man, you were supposed to slab out there, man. Bob was eventually memorialized in his native O-Block with a painting that became a tourist spot. This mural became a pilgrimage for both diehard fans who wanted to show their love at... I'm gonna go over there and take a pic. Still up. We added to our own... Since we've been doing all of this. Yeah, take a pic. Oh, God. <laughs> Put that ball right up. <laughs> it's right by O-Block. No we can slide right that. over there. Yeah, 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 whatever. <laughs> <laughs> nah, hey, another thing, like, you would be shocked how many people come in town, never been to Chicago, and they go right over there to the trenches to take that picture. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. Like, they really think that's a tourist spot. People really think O Block is a tourist spot. Like, people be trying to walk through there and everything. Well, you put it on the map, I mean, the change could happen because of that. Well, O, o Block ain't finna be no more. No, they bought that. Um, they bought it out. No. Yeah, I think the city bought it out. They finna. I don't know when, but everybody eventually gonna have to be moved out. They gonna tear it down. Oh, uh, that's what I'm saying. Eh? That's why Dirk said Von oh, was trying to buy it. To show that they're not scared. You know, I don't think they had that kind of money. Von came to Sip Cash, posting up at the mural with a disrespectful caption towards Von. With Cash himself ending up being killed only months later. What the dude that I told you that I killed when I was over there in Auburn Gresham, uh -huh. you know, he got killed over there. That's um he had right after um he had posted that little disrespectful post, they didn't waste no time with him. Disrespectful caption towards Von, with Cash himself ending up being killed only months later. Once a few months passed from Von's death, his self claimed twin Lil Durk would dedicate his next album, The Voice, to King Von. Releasing it on December the 24th, 2020, 
with a front cover that depicted Dirk and Von together. And eventually, Quando Rondo would break his silence about his involvement in the incident that turned yeah, yeah, him light. On the 20th of November 2020, Quando Rondo releases the song End of Story, a song that's title is a disrespectful play on Von's most popular song, Crazy Story. And in the song, Quando touches on the incident that ended up taking King Von's life, expressing frustration about being judged and saying that other people's friends wouldn't have defended him like Lil Tim did, as well as essentially dissing King Von and his- I ain't gonna lie, so we doing a documentary, we might as well hop into this reaction. Not, to, not today, but I'm saying we might as well do this next time we record, I ain't gonna lie. I was holding off on doing Young Boy and, and Quando, that's why I put a little poll out. I don't know if y'all seen it, but when I hit 5K subs, which I'm about 75 away, something like that, then I put a poll out, some artists we should do, and I thought Young Boy was gonna win it, but Lil Baby ended up winning it, so we gonna get into Lil Baby for sure. I'm gonna show him some Juice World. But then, but since this fresh, we might have to just do this too. Cause this explain he explained in this song everything I was just saying, like about do, doing what he supposed to do. Him, Lil Tim. Like Lil Tim did, as well as essentially dissing King Von and his friends, saying "blood on your brother on the ground, go pick your man's up." As well as rapping that him and Tim are claiming self-defense and that Von should have never put his hands on Quando. He would also claim that this situation led to a million dollar bounty being put on his head. And following the release of this song, he would also elaborate further on the events that unfolded that night in an extended interview with Angela Yee, speaking on the situation, saying that the night that Von was killed, he thought he was just letting a group of random people walk past before being suddenly sucker punched by Von. Like, I'm thinking it's a regular individual, next thing you know a nigga hit me. Quando would say that the entire incident felt like an out-of-body experience to him. It's like I had an out-of-body experience. Quando would also claim that the moment that Kimbo came him. over and started to fight with him, he felt like the devil was coming to get him. Like, it's like the devil was coming to get me, like... Quando explained to Angela Yee that Lil Tim was his day one homie and he would protect him from anything. He would, I would think about it, he's gonna protect me with anything which anybody should do. Apparently, while the gunshots were going off, Quando says that he prayed, unaware of what was going on and only coming to his senses after both Von and Tim had been shot. On some out loud screaming jive, like out of body experience, it's like everything went back normal and I could back down. Quando was adamant that he didn't even know that it was King Von that he'd been fighting until the next day. I didn't know this was him. And man, I just swear to God, on my soul, man, I'm like, like now. Quando would also say that he didn't know about the beef between Young Boy's camp and King Von's camp when this all went down. Cause I know dude just dropped the tape. Like was they trying to do something to me? Just boost him up or like what? I don't, you don't know. You just don't know where. You just don't mm -hmm. know where. I don't know. Yeah, no However, unfortunately for Quando Rondo, there would be more tragedies headed his way personally following the death of Vaughn. In the aftermath, Quando Rondo and his team would be a frequent target of what appeared to be revenge attacks. He would be targeted in a shooting at a convenience store in Georgia on the 2nd of May 2021, luckily escaping without injury. But in the next incident, Quando would be less lucky. On August the 20th, 2022, Quando Rondo and his entourage would be targeted in a shooting in Los Angeles, an incident which left his close friend Lil Pab dead and a devastated Quando Rondo being recorded at the scene in the immediate aftermath. This just happened like a couple Quando just dropped his album and everything about this a um, couple weeks ago. I reacted to his album. His album was hard though, because like you say, you see all this stuff he's going through. He has some real pain to talk about. That's what make any artist good, right? That got some talent. But um, yeah, this I don't think this had nothing to do with King Von though. This was um this was he a crip. Okay. So this has something to do with, with um he was out there in LA, this has something to do with that 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 stuff. Okay. I think. Von's life was one of extremes. He grew up in extreme poverty with a major disadvantage. He found himself being drunk into the extremely violent streets of Chicago, and he ended up being allegedly one of the most violent killers in Oblock's history. By the time he died, he'd been connected to at least 11 murders that I've read about, but ultimately, we'll probably never know the full extent of Von's activities in the streets. There's no doubt that Von was a prolific gangbanger and shooter, but having spent so much time analysing him and the things that he did in his life, it's hard to ignore the pleasure and pride that he seemed to get, not just from killing, but being known as a killer. An everyday gang member or even mob hitman tends to kill for survival or money. But for Von, reading all of his tweets and lyrics, it's clear that he derived a great deal of psychological pleasure from the killings that he was associated with. It seemed like he was more satisfied by carrying out a hit in the streets than making a hit record. And perhaps that's why, when he got rich and famous as a rapper, he couldn't leave that in the past, because he wasn't killing to survive, he was killing for fun. 
and gained satisfaction from the whole world knowing what he had done. There was no reason for Vaughn to take so much pleasure in the murder of Can't Get Right, and there really was no reason for Vaughn to put a $100,000 bounty on FBG Duck's head. Vaughn would have been a millionaire by this point, and FBG Duck was also a successful rapper in his own right. Duck wasn't a threat to the survival of Vaughn or any of his friends at this point. No, to Vaughn, Duck was just another trophy, another body on his tally, another score on the board. Sadly, many people look up to King Von for what he did in the streets, but I don't think that's much different from how other serial killers seem to get idolized. Someone like Jeffrey Dahmer was known for targeting black gay men in his community, partly due to the fact that he knew he could get away with it. And when it comes to King Von's alleged victims, it seems like he had a type too. Young black men and women from the same poor and overpopulated area he was from. Because perhaps like Jeffrey Dahmer, Von knew that the cops simply didn't care enough to solve these crimes, so he knew he would get away with it. And he did get away with it for his entire life. Vaughn would beat every murder investigation that his name was ever placed in, but if he was alive today, he very well may have been facing a life in prison for his role in the killing of FBG Duck. Vaughn gave the world a lot of great music that told one of the most unique and raw stories to have ever come out of the Chicago drill scene. Vaughn will definitely be remembered as one of the biggest and best rappers to ever emerge out of the city. He made great music, but also did terrible things. And so realistically, probably also be remembered as rap's very first serial killer. That was good. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. Shout out to, uh, what's his name? Trap Lure? Trap Lure Ross. Yeah, that was very well put together. I'm not, I wasn't expecting that out of this documentary. I was like, man, what are you finna tell us for three and a half hours, bro? Like, I wasn't expecting, I'm thinking this finna be like the rest of them. But this was the information, the detail he went into, everything he did, research. I know it took a bunch of time to put all this together. That was, that was good. I had to go on video right there. But anyway... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was a good, it was a good documentary, man. I, I think that um, I'm surprised, you know, I was able to sit through. You know, we, I'm glad we broke it down in three sessions, like we did. Yeah, that's another thing. Um, I didn't know he was gonna keep. He kept our interest. Yeah, like three and a half hours. That's crazy. Definitely, definitely kept our interest, and um, it was this documentary was different from all the other stuff like I watch on TV and. All the little different um, homicide ones and things like that. Um, it, it, it put a lot of stuff in perspective with, with King Bond. I mean, like I said before, a lot of y'all heard me say it, man. King Bond's music was something that, you know, I, I, I didn't want to like, but the reality is I vibe to it. Um, you know, it's, it's good music in the sense of, you know, when you're in the gym, you get turned up um, and you get to spill it. Uh, don't condone any of the other acts, but I mean, you know, this is one of those situations where um, I don't know anything about this man until you introduced me. So that, that, that this man that lived the life and died, and I'm just now finding out. So, you know, very interesting, very interesting. You know, definitely. Yeah, like I said, man, we gonna get into. Um, we got a couple more artists we finna start getting into, man. We finna hit 5K subs real soon, man. But you know we on the road to 10K, so if you're new and you're watching this video, hit that sub button right now. Hit that like button. Um, y'all drop in the comments what y'all want to see going forward uh, with other little interviews. and um, I don't know about no more King Von documentaries. I feel like we learned everything we can learn from this three and a half hour video. But y'all know, I know he got a couple more interviews out there. And y'all know we're going to get into the Dirt interview um, on Million Dollars Worth of Game. That one probably going to be next. But, yeah, y'all drop stuff in the comments that y'all want to see um, my dad react to. Besides that, make sure y'all leave a like, comment, subscribe, post notification bell. Gang, out.